Friday morning. It is August 26th here at about 10 a.m. This is your tropical update on what we're tracking as we head into the upcoming weekend. Some things to be aware of. Now, fortunately, nothing is still an imminent threat to the United States, so not looking at anything too wild anytime soon, but we are tracking a couple of areas. Notice there on your map, we've got two areas still being highlighted by the Hurricane Center, one way out in the open Atlantic and one in the Caribbean. I want to briefly touch on the one that's in the main development region, which is the open Atlantic out here. There are actually kind of two features to this we're keeping an eye on. This is one part of it and then another one down in here. Now the models are really going to struggle with this with these two features but generally over the next five days it looks like this general zone in here is where we could see some low pressure trying to spin up and some of our models do spin up some tropical systems as we head into the beginning of September so in the next week or so so we'll keep an eye on that long term and if you are watching us out in the Caribbean islands we're talking out towards the less or Antilles, Barbados, anywhere out in here. It is maybe something you want to keep an eye on a little bit sooner, but generally it's still way out there and we've got a little while longer to track it, at least into next week. That's what's going on out in the main development region. Now here's what's going on with our tropical wave in the uh, uh, in the uh, Caribbean. There's not much to it. It is still fighting a tremendous amount of dry air. When you look at it, there is a unorganized uh, area of showers and storms with this tropical wave. So the tropical wave does this and there's just no really storms with it. Reason for that it is still battling a lot of dry air. Now it's moving to the west. It's been progressing at about 15 miles an hour. Yesterday if you were watching the wave was sitting about right here. Now it's about right here and tomorrow it'll be about right there. So it's progressing along at about 15 miles an hour. But while you do have somewhat of a wave in there, look at all the dry air surrounding it. And that's going to keep this thing from doing anything for the next couple of days. So today and Saturday, I just don't think it's going to look like much. It might not even look like anything into Sunday. Now, as we go out in time here, it is eventually going to start to move into a more favorable environment with more moisture. And then that's when it might try to organize. Keyword there, might. We're still not exactly sure how this is going to evolve down the road. But here's what we think right now. The wave gets, we'll say, south of Jamaica by Sunday and Monday, somewhere in here. As we go into uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when it's going to be in the Western Caribbean. So anywhere uh, towards the end of that graphic there, or the end of that yellow hatched area you see. That's when it'll have a better chance to organize. Now, then this is where the forecast gets a bit tricky. What does the wave do? Does it go into Central America and dissipate? Go into the Pacific? That's an option. Some guidance, though, spins it up more and uh, tries to organize the wave more in the Northwest Caribbean by the middle of next week, Wednesday, Thursday. So those are the two scenarios we really need to keep an eye on. Now, of course, anything that tries to organize in the Northwest Caribbean, we really are interested in it in the Gulf region because that's where storms typically form if they want to get in the Gulf. Uh, so that's what we'll be watching towards the middle of next week, which is still about seven days away. That's a long time out or five to six days away from now. That's still a long ways out when you're trying to forecast a tropical wave that just doesn't have anything to it. So when you're seeing all the model runs online and you're seeing all these things come out online, whether it's the European or the GFS, take it with a grain of salt. Remember, those models are guessing what's going to happen and there's really no center of the system for it to latch in on and there's just a lot of unknowns at this point. Now, once again, the main thing we'll be watching with this wave is what does it end up doing once it approaches Central America? This is our two big models. The GFS is in the red. That's the American model. The European model is in the green. Notice as you go out in time, what you're looking at here is just area of spin. We call it vorticity. It doesn't show much going on through at least Sunday or Monday. Now, as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, as the environment becomes a little better, notice both models do have um, some vorticity, some lower level spin showing up on the models. The European model going to be in the green there, the GFS in the red. But notice the GFS model has moved that tropical feature into Central America and the European model has moved that feature into Central America. But something else you might notice is a new area of red popping up there on the models. So what the GFS has been doing here, and this is where it gets really, really complicated and tricky, it's been taking part of moisture and spin and storms that's coming off the uh, coast of South America, bringing that up, that kind of combining with what's left over of this tropical wave and spinning something up right in here. That's 
can happen. That has happened many times, and sometimes you can get a storm forming that way. But that's why the GFS is more aggressive with developing this system compared to the European model. The European model just takes what's left over of that tropical wave, pushes it into Central America, and never really does anything with it. And it doesn't bring any vorticity or spin off the coast of South America. So that's why our models are really split right now. So what we'll be watching into early next week is how do the models converge? Do they finally start to agree? Because right now, they do not. And you can see by the end of this model run into Thursday, the GFS has a tropical system jumping off into the Gulf of Mexico. And it has to do with uh, the GFS picking up and some vorticity or spin getting pulled up along with that tropical wave from South America, which can happen. That did happen last year with Ida. So uh, it's something we'll definitely want to watch. We still got a long time to track this. It's no immediate threat to the United States, but we do need to keep an eye on this and keep an eye on the trends really as we go into early next week. Of course, this is still seven to 10 days out. If it ever threatens the Gulf of Mexico region, the Northern Gulf Coast, we've still got over a week to track this thing. And there are gonna be likely changes in the models. That's why I don't like people to just hone in on a model and focus on it and watch every model run when we're this far out. It's going to drive you crazy because it's going to jump around quite a bit. One day it may have a system in Texas, excuse me, the next day it may have it in Louisiana, the next day it may not have anything at all, and the next day it may have it in Florida. That's what it's been doing, but it has been pretty persistent. The American, the GFS model, it has been pretty persistent with it spinning up something, so it definitely warrants the attention uh, and something we'll keep an eye on. But for now, I think we're going to go through the weekend looking Okay, but make sure you're checking in at least daily to make sure there's no big changes. And of course, as any developments come, we will keep you updated. But for now, that's going to do it for your Friday morning tropical update. I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe weekend.